What's up guys, Coach Alex and Coach Sue here with Physique Development and today we are going to answer the question, what is the difference between a stiff-legged deadlift and a bent knee RDL? Because honestly, when I look at pictures, they look really, really similar. If you say that, you're probably right. There's a very nuanced difference that's going to allow for us to have one of those biasing more glutes and one of those biasing more hamstrings. We're gonna have this beautiful model, Coach Sue, walk you through and show you those differences today with that barbell. So I'm gonna have Sue go ahead and pick up the bar. The main difference that we're going to see between the stiff-legged option and the bent knee option is going to be, is her knee stiff or is her knee bent? Woo, shocker. <laughs> With the first option, we're going to keep the knees stiff. What we're going to do is simply focus on pushing the hips back while keeping the knees as stiff as possible. There's going to be a slight bend organically, but you are going to notice that this is a shorter range of motion when bending the knee. This is going to allow for us to have a better bias towards the hamstrings relative to the glutes. As we go into the next option and we bend more at the knee, the beautiful thing that happens is that the hamstrings become more of a stabilizer and the glutes become more of a primary mover. You can use a reference point similar to the back squat, where as you're getting deeper into that squat, the hamstrings are stabilizing the knee and the glutes and the quads are doing a lot of the work. It's very similar to the bent in the RDL as she is bending more at the knees and go ahead and push your hips back, Sue. She's going to have a greater range of motion, but those hamstrings are gonna become more of a stabilizer and she's going to be generating a lot of her force out of the movement from her glutes. We'll go ahead and put both variations on the screen so you guys can see them side by side. As you see, there's not a whole lot of difference, but if we're trying to have a bias towards a specific muscle group, these nuanced changes are gonna be very important. And another thing to keep in mind is that when we have these variations, it doesn't mean that these muscles are working in isolation. The muscles themselves are going to work in conjunction with one another, but some of them are going to have a greater bias of tension depending on how we set the movement up and how we execute it. I hope that cleared up any of the questions that you may have between those two variations and how you can apply them within your training. If you have not subscribed to the channel yet, please do so. And if you wanna leave us a comment and let us know what our next video should be, please do that. And we'll see you in the next one. Bye. Bye. <laughs>